Yep, here they come. Here comes Georgia. Alrighty, so I think a city-state army is absolutely going to be what we need to send in this direction. More space up here as well. I'm going to treat myself to a city on that tile next to the river. That'll be my fourth. Not bad. They're spread out. They've got a lot of space. Political philosophy. I joked about it. I'm going to do it. This is not the best choice, but autocracy time. Oh dear. Can't help myself. General points, I feel like I'm going to need them. I'm also going to put a gogi in, urban planning and diplomatic league. As much as I really want this campus, and I really do want the campus, I might feel like I've got to send some extra troops my way here. So there's levying Mexico City. That gives me something. I'm going to sit outside their city as well and just threaten them. I really want to finish that campus. Oh, you're not going to let me, are you? Fine. Right, let's rush walls now. Oh, I've got iron apparently. Where is my iron? There. And under my campus? Oh, game. Oh, game. You cheeky sausage putting iron under my plus five campus how dare you they knew exactly what it was doing <laughs> How very dare you. Question is going to be, how many turns have I got before the war declaration? Do I get at least a couple? Every turn I get gives me time to build this archer and gather the warriors back. I also can use my profit to kind of just lure this warrior away. If they do declare war, they'll go, oh, look at this succulent, tasty profit to myself and go and attack that. The fool. The fools. That's what we're hoping anyway. And yep, there you go. Look at this. I'm just sat my units outside here. What you going to do? Another turn goes by. No war declaration. Good, good. All my units are just coming back home, you know? Longer you wait, Georgia, the less effective this is going to be for you. I will require open borders, my friend. 19 gold, you fleecer. Oh, I feel scammed. There is one relic sighted. And I need two, three hundred gold for that. But I really want the relics because food, production, faith, gold. It's a big combo. That's the sort of thing that'll keep my capital super healthy, tasty, fresh. There you go. The absolute inevitable happened. A surprise. Surprise! I am so surprised, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so surprised. All right, we might be able to just have a little bit of fun here. They're moving my warrior away. Sure. Give my profit to that. And my archer can actually shoot from the city. Oh, yeah. You waited far too long. Far too long. In fact, actually, I've got all of these warriors. Maybe I can take this city out before they even throw the walls up. This is a possibility. It's a, a slim possibility, but we'll give it a good go. And luckily for me, actually, Georgia was the one trading my amber. They were buying a lot of my diplo favor as well. So they have released themselves from that debt. That is a little annoying. That's why I like trading gold per turn when you're playing on deity. It's horrible. There you go. The heavy chariot took the bait. You fool. You absolute fool. And now this warrior is going to have no choice but to attack my warriors in defensible locations. <laughs> ah, and the prophet's going to come back out immortal. Come in. Kill me again. I have risen. The beard gives me power. Yep, they couldn't help themselves yet again. Oh, I tell you one thing we could do. Can I bribe my allies into joining in on this war. Come and help us. Uh, no, no is the short answer. None of them want to join. It's worth always checking. Well, in all of that chaos, my campus is now complete. I'll celebrate by making a second archer. Never may it be said, but I don't buy enough troops. Profit, out again. Here's a kill. I'm starting to think that everybody had a wonder except from me. I mean, how long Bayo's over there? But that's so far away from my land. Dear, oh dear. All right, let's see if we can take advantage of George's boldness here. That is the city sieged. So we'll do as much damage as we can to it with our ridiculous levied warriors. I actually have a warrior on my holy site. I'm going to stop things getting pillaged. We're doing this properly, ladies and gentlemen. Archer, ancient walls, making allies with people. Come on, then, Georgia. Give me what you've got. I've got my unique swordsman on the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can attack me all you like. I've got an archer stood on a hill. I have an archer shooting from my city. I've got walls approaching. I have fortified warriors on rainforest hills. You're not getting through. And my profit is just being an absolute pain. Yep, yep. Attacking a defendable location. You did do 52 damage to me. That is a lot. I'll confess. I will admit. But you are not going to break through. Not easily. Not today. Not with a garrison archer just being an absolute pain for you. Using my gold for infrastructure. Have a shrine. Feed that world. That's what I say. Reinforcements are arriving into this city. But we've actually done an admirable amount of damage to the city. If they don't put walls up next turn... I can raise it. So this war will be entirely successful for me. Okay, they're attacking my units, they're attacking my city, but what they are doing is scattering their attack across multiple units. I can fall back in an orderly pattern. We can dish the damage evenly. Nope, we're going to just focus and kill a couple of units. And again, the profit. Oh, I'm so alluring. Come and attack me. Yep, I think you've 
left yourself open here because <laughs> the problem for you, Georgia, is that these are levied warriors. Their health does not concern me. And that's the city and it is raised. Oh no, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have attacked me, should you? I feel like the AI doing that. <laughs> I say, yeah, 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 you back off. They're gonna try and hold the pass for Mopoli style. Ursa's coming and he's got units. Don't let them cross. I'm thinking, yeah, go on, man, you hide back. That swordsman is going to run out of ideas very, very soon. I think the warrior might be able to hold using the river, using the defense. The fact that swordsman is so weak gives me hope, but I, I mean, it's a levied unit. We're gonna give it a try. If it was my own unit, I'd protect it more carefully. Oh no, the prophet got attacked again. Oh, I'm so alluring. Come and attack me. Surprisingly, yeah, their swordsman is running. You can only run so far though, because all of the tiles around you are two movement tiles and I'm stood on a hill. So yeah, you're dead. And the trap is set in the other direction as well. Oh, you're not getting out of here alive. No, no, no. I shouldn't enjoy this quite as much as I do, but I do enjoy it because the AI totally deserves this. There's iron working, but the trap is sprung and all of these units are just going to get killed immediately. I think we're pretty safe now. I'll use my profit to go and explore. Use it as a bit of a scout, but I've even got my unique unit. I feel a lot safer than I did a few turns ago, I will admit. Peace and some gold per turn. I thought so. I thought so. Barbarians, fend it off. Georgia, fend it off. Come on game, what you got? What you got? I can take it. My first trade route. We need to make sure we have a road network between my cities because they're so far away from each other. Send news, we have a problem. Armed units will arrive in about 17 turns. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be what's kind of happening right now. Theology. I like urban planning. But I'm going to put Corvée in briefly because I am working on the Temple of Artemis. Not going to be the best, but it will give me at least a few amenities in my capital, as well as providing me some delightful housing and food, which I need to keep the city growing. A brave, growing city. You know, I really like 15 gold per turn. That's a really good deal. But I also like the Chains of the Apostle. Go on. 20 gold per turn on top of that. This is beginning to become affordable, you know. How much after? Mm. Oh, so close. I'm going to wait one more turn, let my resources grow, and then I might be able to just get my first relic, you know. Construction will give me the delightful addition of a lumber mill, and I'm just trying to think about what I'm going to do in terms of my workings. I would like as much culture as I can get. Culture is a really good thing. So government plaza there to get a plus three theater square. Let's try that. Let's chop this up. This will help Temple of Artemis as well. And Prophet, it's time for you to become my next scout. I'm not going to need a religion for a little while. These missionaries as well. Luckily, Georgia gave me missionary zeal. Off you go. Zeal around the world. Oh, India, I know you have a religion. I know you really want to spread it to me, but it's warrior monks. It's not feed the world. I cannot allow this, so I'm just going to keep it a little bit safe. In fact, maybe I can't even use my missionaries to scout. Maybe we have to keep them by my cities. I don't want to be converted. Not today. Not any day. There we go. No gold per turn needed. Here is a relic. It's in my capital. Gives me two food, two production, four gold, five faith, eight tourism. It's the first, hopefully, of many. We need to collect these like they're going out of fashion. Nope, no, no, no. Stop spreading this to India. Don't do it. Don't do it. I want to feed the world. That's my whole thing. I stole it. I don't want to be unstolen from it. Temple of Artemis, each camp, pasture, plantation within four tiles of the wonder provides one immunity. That's good for my capital, but it's also the little bit that you can't see right now, which is the extra housing and the extra food that it comes. Yes, I know you're the preeminent builder of wonders, but you're just not doing a very good job, are you? Four food and three housing. Huge improvement for Kabasa. Excellent stuff. So that's three of the era score we need. We need two more in three turns. What are we going to do? Well, I'm just about to get a great general. That will give me one of my era scores. We need to find one more thing we can do. Just a single thing. Make a horseman would have been quite useful if I'd actually saved some of my horses, but I didn't. That would be what we would call far too clever. Oh, I'm gonna popular, yeah, populate up to 10 pop. I'll get a nearer score from that. Oh, perfect. Okay, we don't even need to worry. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't even need to worry. It's fine. Okay, I might have changed my mind on where to settle because there's been a lot of fire down here and this tundra is now amazing. Look at these yields. Oh, this might be where city number four goes. Speaking of, we're about to unlock a couple of the new things as we go into the next era. That'll be medieval. Every city will have a 7% growth rate rather than a 4% and as 
we get above population 10 into population 12, you'll see I'll get 5% on yields. Oh, that'll be good for my capital. Nope, nope. Do not remove feed the world whilst I'm trying to get to 10 pop. India, this is not helpful. <laughs> of all of the things you could be doing right now, this is not helpful at all. There is one era score. I have two turns. I think I'm going to be okay either way because I think the growth, I only need three food. Yeah, we'll be fine. But still, India, stop it. Stop it. Oh my lord, the yields are amazing. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I've, I've made my mind up. This is good. Era score. Golden age. Unlocked and construction. And the fire is still burning. This might actually be a perpetual fire here, you know? That'll be cool if it is. Not that perpetual fires are cool, but um, th th they are. They are cool. Oh, and finally, Pingala has leveled up. Okay, Connoisseur. One culture per turn for each citizen in the city. That'll help me just to get some of these early civics. Keep feed the world on the city. I'm just going to have to use all of my faith, I think, here, just to continually buy missionaries up until the point I have the temple, which is not far off, you know. Then I can buy apostles, then I can use it to fight the religion myself. This is such a weird build. I'm actually using someone else's religion aggressively here, but but no, we're going to do it. That's how much I like feed the world. Golden Age, natural philosophy, get in there. Keep strategos in, I think, is most likely, yeah, either that will put the writer points in, but Germany is actually getting right at the moment. I don't mind that. If I was to get this for my capital, I would have one extra amenity because it's got three specialty districts and I'd get some extra food from specialty districts and extra improvements with housing. I, this is weird. I don't know if it's the best, but that makes me want to use it all the more. So the government plaza is giving me food right now, I guess because of the farm. Okay. And Cabasa is now super happy as well. This is okay. Right. That is probably worth it just for that. Okay. Pingala, give yourself researcher. Starting to populate into the yield a little bit now. George is back. They're not going to allow this insult to last. Oh, I really wished I would have been able to condemn India's religion there. Never mind. Let's vote for double general points and city center buildings. The usual. No writers. No city centers. It's a good thing I didn't put the writer card in, isn't it? She's speaking, Matt. I don't think we're actually going to get this general, are we? No. So the great general card is useless. Instead, let's put scripture in. Is anyone asking how these deer are still alive amongst all this flame? No? Let's move on and not think about it. Oh, <laughs> George. Just not even bothering to convert my cities. Their missionaries just disappeared. What's the point? Come back. Give me feed the world. I want it. There we go. It's back. Just as the temple finishes. Okay. What we're doing is I'm setting up a nice situation now where I can put the diplomatic quarter down. I can put the government plaza down. We can start getting some proper and true autocracy bonuses. Let's start with the audience chamber. That'll help me to grow nicely and we can start chopping it out. Give myself a little bit more population whilst I'm doing it. If I'm going to do that, I should probably spread my governors around a little bit so that everyone gets a benefit. Let's go for Liang, because tiles in the fourth and fifth ring of this city can be purchased by gold. That is a useful late game ability. Let's pop you down immediately. Oh my lord, India is determined. India is determined. We need to actually get an apostle in here and start fighting them off, I think. My missionaries are doing the job for the moment, but I don't want to have to keep spending my faith on this. At some point, maybe getting my own religion might be the policy. Might be the strategy. I have another, my final settler now on the way. This is too tempting. I mean, look at this. I can get all of this burnt wood with seven food and six production tiles. Oh, you can't, you can't tempt me with that and not let me get it. It's, it's too good. Audience chamber, done. Get that diplomatic quarter down. Oh, and yeah, look at this. For every farm next to it, it's getting extra food. I kind of think I see how this is working now. Just put a lot of farms down everywhere, everywhere. Next up, I'm going to go Moksha. I have a feeling you're going to be very handy later in the game. Temple, done. Time for feudalism and extra builder charges. That's my last scout killed. We did a large chunk of the map. Oh, no, no, I've got one more. One more scout. I keep finding barbarian crossbows. Those are the absolute worst to just randomly come across. We don't like those at all. No. Consulate. We like those a little bit more. I don't like this religion though. Please get out. Apprenticeship. We're burning through these texts a little quicker than we previously were. If I can get education, get universities up, I think that's going to be a great start as well. But Kabasa is growing. I'm waiting for India's missionaries to just go away. I'm so close to being able to afford an apostle. Once I've got the apostle, then I can start aggressively defending Feed the World. We're not going to make the transition to my religion for some time, probably the later stages of the game, once we've got a bunch of relics. That's what we're really waiting for today. So I'm about to settle city number four. Let's just quickly check and see what that will do to all of my yields. First of all, it's not really going to affect the growth bonus. That's going to be pretty much the 
the same, but I will lose a little bit of percentage bonus here. Currently, Kabasa is getting 5% extra yields. It will drop to plus three. Not great. And we also need to get, I think, to 17 population for our first tall extension. It's not ideal, but look at these yields. I'm sorry. We have to do it. We have to do it. I don't think we're going to go above four cities, though. The wide and tall mod demands that we stay there. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to go any further above because then we're going to have to get to crazy tall cities in order to get the tall extension buildings, and that wouldn't be fun. We want to see all of these little mechanics at play as best we can. There's the builder. Get the granary sorted. We'll get the ivory sorted. This city's going to grow very quickly. Here's a feed the world apostle. I hope it's a good debater. It may not be, but it's going to have to be. I would love my unique district, but I'm going to rush divine right because Mont Saint Michel is too powerful. It's too important to my overall strategy. We have to make sure that we can build that if we can. As we start to get into the medieval era, into the Renaissance, we start to get close to archaeological museums, which hold artifacts, which I can, of course, eat, as you know. We do need to start thinking about putting theatre squares down, and look at that. I am already getting food from my theatre square. You just have to accept it. It's what it is. Debater. We got a debater, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. Right, this is brilliant. Sorry, India. You are not going to spread in my lands anymore. Well, that's a lie. They are. They're going to continue spreading in my lands, but I'm going to try and stop them. I need to make sure I trap them in such a way that I can get both attacks off. Kill the missionary without it running away. That's the biggest problem for me. Oh, look, the consulate. I'm now getting a whopping plus three from autocracy now, I think. Got the audience chamber. We've got the consulate and we've got the palace. Yes, plus three. Oh, it's, it's so ridiculously bad. We went past turn 100, by the way. We haven't got anywhere near 100 on any yield, but given the barbarians, I'm giving myself 10 turns. <laughs> I know that's not how it works, but I'm going to judge myself on turn 110 yields. It's just, it's just fairer. It's just more reasonable, I think. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree with myself. Funny that, eh? India's getting intel on my movements, so I'll give them a delegation. Does that help? It does. It gives me a little bit more knowledge on them. I need you to not be able to run away. This is perfect. Right, they can't go anywhere now. 91 damage. Ha ha ha. Oh, a debater apostle makes these things so much easier, don't you think? We've got a theatre square being built in two cities now. I do want campuses, commercial hubs, theater squares. I want all of it. These are going to be huge cities, right? They're going to have absolutely everything, but I need to make sure that I have at least somewhere to put tasty, tasty artifacts in every city. Monarchy, in you go. And I think I'm obligated at this point to put autocratic legacy back in. I, it, it's, it's terrible, but I am obligated morally to put it back in because that's what we're doing today. Limes, that plays off nicely with the World Congress. Just make sure that we've got walls up in all of us cities, you can see I'm not declaring an alliance with India just in case they forward settle me and I need to attack them. But Germany, Germany I can form an alliance with. Let's make you a military ally because you don't have your own religion. If you had your own religion, then I'd make you a religious ally, but you don't. You're a failure. Bam! Minus 250 Hinduism and then plus 250 to feed the world. That is the way that we permanently now keep feed the world in our cities. You're not going to get this off, India. So stop trying, all right? Stop trying. My golden age, by the way, is giving me plus one food to the city center as well. So if I put an improvement that gives food like a farm down next to the city center, it's even giving me the bonus. I like that. The synergy here I'm enjoying. Again, using zone of control to make sure that the Indian missionaries cannot move away. Like so. Now we can get a couple of good attacks in. Doesn't matter where you're going, we'll kill you. We'll get you. Fizz square, done. But autocratic legacy is calling. Not planning on going for crazy war right now, but maybe I will will need the Grand Master's Chapel should I need to just summon a bunch of artillery and rid somebody of, uh, you know, something around my lands. There's a possibility. Intelligence agency might be a little more useful. I don't know. Every time I go for intelligence agency, I'm just disappointed by it. I'm just disappointed by spies full stop. I'm gonna go foreign ministry. It feels like a weird choice, I know, but I have a lot of suzerains and I could just levy units, although, mm, no, nope, changing my mind. I'm going for the Grand Master's Chapel. If I keep changing my mind and never decide, I get all of the buildings, right? Is that how it works? Uh-oh, storm, southeast. Southeast is fine. That's towards Wulin and Mexico City, not towards my beautiful city. We can't have that. What we can have is the mass murdering of Indian missionaries. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I'm undoing all of your benefits. I want Feed the World, okay? I want Feed the World. I'm going to have Feed the World, whether you like it or not. It's just one of those things. This is already a four-population city down in the south, and we've just built the monument, and we're 
starting to absorb all of these delicious burnt forest tiles. Yes, I know we've hit 15 population in my main city, but look at this. Oh, it's wonderful. 15 population though is the first major threshold that we had to hit for the CYP tall growth bonuses. So we're just riding a comfortable plus 7% extra growth. That's fine. And we're now at 6% extra science, culture, faith, and great people points. Not a problem. Oh, no, I do apologize. It's 17. I need to get to 17 before I get tall extension. That's because we have a fourth city. But as you can see, the pathway is now open to us. We don't have to grow a huge amount more to get some really good stuff in Kabasa. I think I can just rest easier at night knowing that I have the Grandmaster's Chapel. There's something comforting about it. Something wonderful. Georgia, if this gets any closer to me. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've learned our lesson from last time, have we not? I think have we not is the answer here. Final governor that I think would be quite useful. I think we're going to take Raina down into the burnt forest city. This could be quite useful, you know, just in case. First industrial zone. Barbs are attacking me, but I've got my unique swordsman. Millet tree engineering has revealed some knights are underneath the holy site. Amazing. Now Pingala has grants. More great people point in my capital, which is going to be really handy with the university, the amphitheater. Guilds has unlocked my unique neighborhood. Extra housing, food, gold, regardless of where you put it, it's really quick to put down as well. Actually, serfdom is no longer very useful to me. I'm popping down gothic architecture and craftsmen because we were on 20 turns for Mont Saint Michel. Now we're on 15. There we go. Let's get this done. Then we can start hunting for relics because I can buy apostles from George's religion and then send them into Indian lands where they'll all be massacred and I will pick up infinite relics. Oh, 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 maybe. I don't know if they'll be infinite. That's probably an exaggeration. Infinite growth has been unlocked because we now have our unique housing district, which is giving me a little bit of extra food now. Lovely. My capital will just continue to grow, hopefully perpetually, but I, I'm not sure about that. Getting builders to clear some land in my capital. I'm trying to work out if building a meeting house is a good idea or not. Probably isn't. I'll save it in just in case we come up with something more interesting, more fun. I believe we are hurtling towards a dark age here. I also don't necessarily believe that it's the worst thing. The population we have in our cities is so colossal and the lack of anyone near us because of the loyalty pressure we're putting in, that means I don't think we're particularly vulnerable here. I might let that tick around. I might just see what happens. I'm kind of enjoying the golden age though. We're getting a little bit more food. It's helping with our city growth. And we've actually unlocked our first tall extension building in our capital now. This is interesting. I could get the temple tall extension. Now this would double feed the world in my city, which would be another six food and four housing. The university tall extension, however, would just give me an absolute metric ton of science. Hmm. I'll think about it. I'll think about it because ultimately we're here for one thing and one thing alone, which is the neighborhood tall extension. But until we've spread our borders past the third ring, which I'm not far off doing, there's no point jumping on that too quickly. There's very little to vote for here. I'm voting cultural city states and melee troops. I'm saving my points. Yeah, we only won one of those. Not important. The way I see it is if I get a temple tall extension, that helps me to get other tall extensions as long as I've got feed the world. So let's do that. Diplomatic age. We've got diplomatic service now. Diplomatic league is giving me nothing. So I'm going to put merchant confederation in. Everything else looks fairly sensible. My capital has an industrial zone. That has really helped with the production. Finish the tall extension. Save up for a workshop. Build those great engineering points. In fact, I am tempted to rush through Bisheng. Extra districts for a city. I mean, districts are probably not going to be the issue though. Let's be honest. We're going to have just insane population. Another dust storm. This one's going east. All right. It might skirt around my nation. Maybe if we're lucky. Yep. It's just scuttling between all my cities at the moment. Good. Good. Stay out, I say. Stay out. Mont Saint Michel. Okie dokie. Okay, now we can start to farm relics in earnest. Every time I make an apostle, it gains the martyr ability. That means if it dies, it produces a relic. Ladies and gentlemen, look forward to some of the worst religious play you'll ever see. And it's all deliberate. Uh, apostle, uh, apostle. The tall extensions built as well, which means six food from each shrine and temple. <laughs> so much extra housing as well. I'm going to miss feed the world when I, when I get rid of it. It's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. But Apodon Anna is calling me. Let's see if we can pop that down. Okay, I'm not even going to really bother to even promote these apostles. These could not be any more sacrificial.
official if I tried. Come on, print them. Print them as fast as we can. Maybe if one of my other cities does get converted to India's religion, then I'll send them the other direction. Send them over to Georgia. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Well, we elected to go into the Dark Age. I'm hoping that we're not going to have a loyalty problem here. Plus 32, plus 32, plus 43. Oh, lovely. Plus 35. Yeah, we're absolutely fine. All right. What are we going to do to give ourselves as much era score as possible now? We only have one trade route. We're not going to be discovering anything. We don't have a religion. Building districts is going to be unlikely. So nobles and peasants again, I think. One era score for the first improvement with housing and food bonus in each city. This can trigger a second time once it gets to 10 population. Era score for each district or building that provides amenities. Okay, that's one of those bonuses, but I think we just don't think about too much. We just play the game. We see what happens and we just go from there. I've also now got a workshop in my capital, hurtling towards 100 production now. Hurtling. Oh, George is already here with their apostles. Ah, this might be a problem. Maybe we'll have to go all the way to Arabia and be annoying over in that direction. Okay, time for archaeological museums. It means we're not far now from natural history, but we need to keep getting as much culture as we can. We need to keep boosting in that direction. Oh, is that a sculpture? Can I have that? That looks really tasty. That looks like, mmm, I can have it. Yay, Kabas is growing even more now. Excellent. Oh, there we go. Here are some apostles, right? They are stronger than me. They have more intel than me. Brilliant. I'm just going to keep hitting my apostles into them. We want to lose these battles. We want to have our apostles destroyed. Gurus. Oh, gurus are the best because gurus heal themselves. Excellent. It may feel weird, but there is logic to this, I promise. Um, I'm sorry. Have you built a city right, right on the point that I destroyed your last one? How dare you? Oh, you cheeky thing. It's like two cities are going to get killed. Oh, yep. Apadana, two envoys, more slots for my capital. That's all very exciting, but that's not the most exciting thing. Now we can kill the apostle and get some sandals. Delicious. Oh, I might accidentally spread the religion to my own cities here if I'm not careful to work our way into Indian lands as much as we can. But this is amazing. This, oh, this goes straight into my capital. Look at this. Holy grail. We're generating them like crazy now. India cannot help it. They just want to kill all of my apostles. There's a debater up there as well. Oh, amazing. I can almost one hit my apostles. Quick, make your way pilgrimage to the front line. There are so many relic slots in my empire. We need to get these all down as quickly as possible. There's a casket. There's an aid request I won because I put one gold into it. Lovely. And there's a philosopher's stone. I'm Harry Potter, everyone. I took it from a scary man in a mirror. One, two, three, four, five delicious relics. Oh, oh, oh. Quick, give me more. Give me more. By the way, my capital has now hit its maximum bonus. We are getting 15% on everything now. Beautiful. For every tall extension I build, I get a little bit more growth rate. So the more I build of these, the better. But we've almost hit infinite growth point. Need to keep pushing. Keep pushing. All so that we can unlock that forbidden, that sacred fourth and fifth ring. Mausoleum. I think building this is going to be handy. The actual positioning of it is rubbish because it's on a two-tile lake. That's not important. It's the engineer charge. Li Sheng is not so useful, but someone like Da Vinci? Very useful. Ooh more tasty sculptures. Delicious. Yes, my palace enjoys those. Look at that. Loads more food and production. 94 production per turn now. Robes of the Guru. Grass cutting sword. Excellent. Even got some archaeological museums up now. Yes, we're a little bit far away from researching that, but if I pick up astronomy quickly, I think we can boost colonialism. I'm also going to take natural philosophy out and put aesthetics in. Don't normally do this, but extra adjacency on culture. Very handy when you have things like plus six theatre squares going on. The odd wonder I'm picking up is starting to help me quite a lot now. The point I've got to consider is at what point do I switch religion? I think when we get to the stage where we have literally nowhere else to put relics, then I will have no choice. But at the moment, Feed the World is just growing my cities nicely. We are getting towards 17 pop in all of them. Then we can start building extensions in all of them. It's all helpful stuff. Oh, India is annoyed. The apostles have come to my territory, but unfortunately for them, I have a debater here. Look, I can spread my religion to you, not the other way around. I'm in control here. Hmm, this might do me a little bit of damage here to my religion, but we're we're carving out the religion for them as well. It, it goes both ways. Come on, more relics. We've got more relic slots appearing by the day. There's a beard. I always like the fact the beard is literally there, just stuck on the man's chin. It's retro, but it works. Let's the city build one more district than usual. We'll do this in Kabasa for now, but I don't think this is going to particularly make a difference. Printing. Actually, I didn't want printing. That was a bad move because now my apostles are more powerful and I was enjoying 
having them will be very naff, to put it another way. Natural history. Ooh, archaeologists are almost here. So my archaeological museum now has six slots for artifacts. This is why I was so excited to play Congo with the wide and tall mod. It's a lot of fun. Three turns. Three turns we can start building archaeologists. We've got to go out around the world finding this sort of thing. India. That city is getting closer now. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Anyway, my capital is now growing onto the fourth ring. All we need to do is unlock this neighborhood tall extension. Then I can start working those tiles. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. I think I can say for everyone who enjoys and loves Civ, a lot of people, including myself, has been waiting a long time to see this in action. It's so, so cool. And here's another. This time it's a cauldron. I really am becoming Harry Potter. Religious artwork. Mm. I think I'll pass. If I can't eat it, I don't want it. I think that's a fair, a fair point, isn't it? Right, natural history is finished. We need to get archaeologists up and running as fast as we can. These are expensive, but every time I find an artifact, oh my goodness, we are going to get chonkier and chonkier and chonkier. There's 28 on the map that I know about. Perfect. Plenty to go and find. It might take me a little while to dig them all up. We'll make a good effort. And tall extension has been built in this city, which means it's now a lot happier than it was. No! India brought a huge apostle. That's the sort of apostle that can just decimate 75% of your religion. Oh, there's nothing much I can do about that. Actually, I say that. We can spread my religion. <laughs> Sorry, India. It's not uh, not going to be a good one for you, this. Well, I think the inflection point, that change where I move to my religion is now coming up pretty soon. Seeing as I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten relics, that's pretty good. In my rainforest slash forest, everything burning down turbo yield city, I have actually built Kilwa, which is quite fun. This was the only city that had access to a coast, three envoys, and a whole bunch of boosts to my nation. Look at this. 82 production in this city already. This is really good. Well, time to gain a little bit more gold and faith. We'll go for faith at the moment. Kilwa helps. We've got Rajin. Now, as our city is beginning to grow, I'm just going to treat myself to a builder or two across my nation, I think. And now, as I get governor titles, we're also keeping an eye for the CYP benefits. So, Curator with Pingala will give me another 0.25 culture for each citizen and then stuff for tall extensions, which I do have. We'll get that in. Perfect. 142 culture per turn coming from this city now. Oh, that's beautiful. Footprint of an apostle. That is a very random thing to have in your nation. I think we're actually ready now, aren't we? We're ready to found my own religion. I'm going to miss feed the world. I'm going to absolutely miss it. But it gets to the point very soon where if I haven't got feed the world in my capital, I might as well start relying on my own growth. Uh, should we do it? Yeah, we're doing it. We've got holy sites in every city. So we should find that every single city converts reliquaries, triple yields of faith and tour from my relics. And just in case I need more relics, I think I'm going to get monastic isolation. Religion's pressure never drops due to losses in theological combat. That's quite handy to have. <laughs> That's <laughs> very handy to have. Right. One, two, three, four. We have converted. We have 800 faith per turn now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my Lord. What? What is this? Oh, my word. That's so much faith per turn. Look at that. 45 from every relic. Wow. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Diebel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixomatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Joseph Bianconi, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke79. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.